my channel and welcome to a video that is long overdue because today I'm finally giving my giant African land snail slushy the upgrade that he deserves. So just in case you're not familiar, if you've not seen the video, just to give you a bit of backstory, I will leave the video linked in the iCards and the description, but slushy was unexpectedly sent to my PO box. I was not expecting a snail or looking to have snails and I just wasn't looking to get any more pets at that time because I was not in the best place health wise and I just didn't have the space but I've done the best I can given the circumstances but an upgrade is definitely long overdue. So this is a medium low exoterra and giant African land snails do get pretty big. They're not just a short term pet you can shove into a small tank. It's literally in the name description and they do require a decent amount of space so this is going to be perfect and they can live up to about 10 years on average so they're not just a quick easy pet that's going to die in like six months to a year obviously unless you don't take proper care of them but they are a long term commitment and they do require quite a bit of space. So this is the new enclosure and this is what he is in currently which is far too small and I'm very consciously aware of the fact that it is too small and he has definitely outgrown this so I'm really excited to get this set up and it gets especially living in here today. Before we get started I also just wanted to quickly touch on the fact that yes I only have one snail and if you know anything about African land snails it is advised and preferable to keep them in at least pairs or groups because they are somewhat social but Given the circumstances, I didn't have much choice in that, and I do think if I had got snails on my own terms in like a few years down the line, I probably would have got at least a pair, but it is just especially today that's going to go in this enclosure. You may also be wondering why don't I just get a second snail, and at the time when he was a baby, obviously I was not really in the right physical or mental headspace to get any more pets, and I was just trying to focus on the ones I had at the moment, but now that I am ready to have snails and they have a bigger enclosure, there's a few problems with that. The first one is that he is not the most common species of snail in the pet trade. He's not like a reticulata or a fullica that are always up for adoption or for sale in pet stores. He is quite a rarer species. He's an Arcacatina marginata citralis, and they are not that commonly found on websites or for adoption. They're a bit more of a less common species, so that makes things a bit more tricky. And also I can't just get a baby snail that are more commonly sold. You can't put babies in with adults or sub-adults. So that makes things a bit tricky because I'd have to find a species that's not as common and is also a similar size to him. So I'm not ruling it out, it just makes things a bit more difficult. And I would like to have one that looks different to him just so I can tell them apart a bit easier. But I'm not ruling it out, I might get a second snail in the future. But right now it is just slushy. <laughs> but let's get started. The first thing I'm putting in is the background. This is a cork background and I got this from a really random website. It wasn't like a reptile or invertebrate website, but they make these exactly to the size of the Exoterra, so I'm hoping it's gonna fit and it's not gonna be too much of a tight squeeze, but we'll see. But I just thought this was really cool. It has like pieces of moss on it and it's gonna be really good for a humid environment. So let's see if this fits or not. <laughs> please fit, please fit, please fit, oh no. Uh, I'll be back when I fix this problem. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so for the substrate, I'm gonna be using cocoa soil, and I've got a pack of six from Amazon, and this just holds humidity really well, and I think I'll need two bricks, maybe one and a half bricks, I'm not sure, but I've only got this tiny tub to mix things in, so I might have to do this one brick at a time. So with the soil, you don't want it to be soaking wet and dripping water. You just want it to be damp enough that it's breaking up the bricks and it's retaining a bit of water, but you don't want it to be soaking and drenching wet because that's not gonna be good for the snail. So with land snails they do require a fair bit of soil and the exoterras are not very deep at the front so what I'm going to do is try to build up the soil towards the background and give a deeper layer at the back that way so she can bury himself deeper in the soil and be completely submerged.
I'm just about to add in some branches and also some dried oak leaves from my local woods. And these have been in the freezer for about three days and then obviously thawed out um, just to make it safe, just to make sure there's no bugs or any nasties on them that could affect the snail. And now they're ready to go. So next I'm adding in a cleanup crew and for this I'm using orange wood lice and springtails and whenever I post a video of my snail on TikTok or Instagram I get so many questions about the white bugs and whether they're supposed to be on the snail and yes that is perfectly normal if you have a bioactive setup. This basically just means when you add these into the tank that they clean up any snail poop or leftover fruit or vegetables and they're really handy to have if you don't want to be constantly cleaning up snail poop so I'm going to add a new colony into this tank and it's these ones in this tub. Then of course we also have this cuttlefish as a source of calcium and this one is just from his old tank that is all covered in soil. And lastly we've just got the food to put in, we've got cucumber, carrots and pepper and these leaf balls which are my favourite thing. Slushy also gets this protein mix a few times a week, this is from a seller on Etsy, I will leave it in the description if you're interested, but this is also going in. One thing I do really need to do is cling film the top of this because exoterras have a lot of mesh and that does not hold in humidity very well, so this species requires about 85-90% to 90 humidity. Right now it's on 85 because I've just sprayed it, but it does require a lot of humidity and that is just all going to escape through the lid, so once I've stopped filming this, I am going to cling film this. It is downstairs at the moment and I'm not going to go and get it, so I will do that after the video, but all of this is going to be cling filmed. I'm just going to wrap it kind of a few times around the top and that should help to keep the humidity in better, so if you are thinking of keeping snails in exoterras, you are probably going to have to do that too. And last but not least is Slushy himself. Don't worry, my hands are wet before I picked him up, but I don't handle him too often because he is quite a shy snail and doesn't really like being handled or touched or you being near him, so we probably won't see too much of him in this video, but he is doing well. As you can see, all of this is new shell growth and he has had a growth spurt, so he is definitely long overdue this upgrade and I'm really excited, so let's pop him in. Slushy, are you coming out? Have you had enough? Do you want to go back into your tiny tank? <laughs> so this is why I really wanted a front opening enclosure, just because I find it really hard with the ones open at the top to interact with them, to take videos, pictures, and I've just not really had that much of an interaction. Not anything like this, anyway. You were not supposed to be in my hand, mister. <laughs> but I just really didn't enjoy having a plastic tank. It's really difficult to take pictures and videos through the plastic. They always ended up really blurred, so that's why I've not really shared any pictures or videos of Slushy over the last almost year because I've just not been able to share them, but hopefully now, where are you going? Excuse me. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was not elegant at all, Slushy. <laughs> 
So while Slushy is exploring, I just thought I'd quickly talk you through what I've got in the tank, just in case anything was unclear. Obviously over this side we have got the heat map, and then this is a spider plant. This is a snail safe plant. If he does decide to eat this, it's not going to be the end of the world. And with all of the plants, even though they look nice right now, I am fully expecting him to just bulldoze them and squish them. And um, that's fine, they look nice right now, but they are not in there for me, they're in there for enrichment for him. Um, so if he eats them and squishes them, that is completely fine. But just in case he does decide to eat them, this is a snail safe plant. And then we have obviously got the cork log and all of the natural branches, and then things like oak leaves, um, the background obviously. Then at the back I've also put this seed pod, this is for the isopods. Not that slushy is really going to pose much of a risk to them, but I just wanted to give them somewhere they could hide, and it's somewhere nice to go into, so hopefully they'll start using that. And then obviously we've got even more live plants, we've got the coriander I think, and the lettuce, which again he's probably going to eat this, and I think he's eating it right now, so I might have to replace that every week, or every two weeks, it's not going to be the end of the world if he does eat these. I can hear him crunching. <laughs> But it's not the end of the world if these do get eaten uh, fairly quickly because I can replace them and that is the entire point of putting edible plants in the enclosure just for his purpose. So yes, he is going to eat the plants, he's going to squish them, he's going to run them over and probably make them very flat but that is kind of the point so I don't mind too much if that happens probably within a day or so. But that is it for today's video, hope you guys have enjoyed watching. I had so much fun doing this and I'm just really glad to have him in a proper setup with enrichment and space and soil and I had so much fun doing this. I've not really done any kind of enclosures like this before and I found it really fun so I kind of want to do more in the future. I don't have anything really besides Orbit to do this for but I really want to so I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video which of course will probably be mouse or rat related. This is not my usual content but I hope you've still enjoyed and I'll see you very soon. Bye!